Volatile session for the market once again. We are now grinding it up just above that 54.50 mark. So up and down, but not made much headway. So it remains a tricky day for the market for the large caps at any rate. We'll have a lot to talk about in the last one hour of trade today. But first, a quick check on the Dabur India numbers which have come in. That the stock has also moved up. Sunil Dugal is with us now. Sunil, afternoon. 17% top line growth. Can you just trip that us first between volume growth and any kind of any kind of pricing improvement? Mm -hmm. Well, 3% is on account of the hobby acquisition, so the, 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 the normal organic growth is around 14%, and the split is around 10 and 4, 10 uh, volume and 4 price. Hmm. Sunil, hi, afternoon. Uh, within the volume hi. growth, then, can you break it up for us in terms of segments, uh, both with skin care and shampoo? How do they do? Mm -hmm. Well, there are plenty of segments, but the standout performance have been home care, then uh, the health supplements, both have grown at 20% plus. Food continues its uh, very strong growth trajectory at around 20-25%, uh, 20, 27% to be precise. The laggards have been shampoos, which has not grown at all, and uh, some other categories like uh, digestives, which have shown moderate growth. So all in all, it's been a reasonably uh, a good mix, uh, and the price increases, like I said, at 4% have uh, been uh, enough to, to, to mitigate the inflation to some extent, but not entirely. So we have felt uh, inflationary pressures, which have impacted the gross margins. But the EBITDA margins uh, we've been able to maintain because of uh, better management of cost. 10% mm. volume growth is respectable, but is it beginning to just level out a little bit, Sunil? Were you not growing at uh, double digits earlier in terms of vol pure volumes? Yeah, you are right. It's leveled off from 12-13% to around 10, whether this is a one-off event or whether it's driven by inflationary pressures which are causing people to consume less. It's hard to say. I, I think uh, the volume growth would remain in the 10 to 12 percent band. They're unlikely to go much further down, but they're also not likely to accelerate much beyond, uh, you know, the 12, 13 percent. So it'll move in this band. Hmm. Uh, in terms of <laughs> margins, then uh, you didn't tell us about pricing. What kind of pricing movements have you seen, and uh, do you think you could maintain this 19 percent margins going into the next fiscal, considering the way raw material uh, cost pressures are escalating? Well, we believe so. It's not going to be easy to maintain 19% of it does. These are uh, at uh, all-time high levels. Uh, I think inflation pressures are going to uh, continue in the fourth quarter and perhaps uh, into the first quarter. Then the base effect will kick in and we'll see a little bit less pressure on our margins. And I think the pricing environment is now far more conducive than what it was, uh, let's say, six months or one year ago. So there's more uh, price increases happening in the environment. Everybody is uh, taking the table up. So that would, uh, uh, you know, be uh, much more in the future than it has been in the past few years. Uh, having said that, whether it will prove to be um, uh, depressive in terms of uh, the consumption, uh, that's something which we'll have to map out, and uh, we hope it won't, but you can never say. Mm. So what do you think is the bigger challenge for this year, uh, Sunil? Is it going to be raw material pressures and therefore managing margins, or do you think because of the inflation environment, it will be down trading and even some hit on volume growth? As a CEO, what is the bigger challenge as you see the, uh, for, the, for 2011? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest challenge is inflation and uh, downgrading happens uh, uh, a little bit uh, much later in the, in, in the whole uh, uh, pricing game. Only when you have price increase in the double digits when you see serious downgrading happening. And even if you have downgrading, I think it impacts companies like us a little bit less because we do have uh, prices, uh, uh, products at the lower end of the pricing spectrum. So inflation worries me much more than anything else uh, and its impact on margins. Hmm. Uh, in terms of the shampoo segment, that's where the worry has been, uh, you know, for volume growth because you're seeing significant competition from your peers like HUL and PNG, etc. What kind of growth can you maintain over there? Because uh, if you look at your overall revenues as well, it's been, you know, uh, the lowest levels, the lowest growth that you've seen in the last many quarters because of certain sub-segments giving you competition. Uh, what is the outlook in terms of competition and how much uh, do you think, you, you know, how do you think you're going to bear all of this? I think shampoos has been an exception. The, the competitive intensity in shampoos and disruptive competitive uh, activity has been unprecedentedly high. So I won't extrapolate shampoos to the rest of the HPC universe or beyond. So I think shampoos uh, would be a, uh, a point of pain for the next couple of quarters and that next year we should see growth coming back. But having said that, we've seen unprecedented growth in shampoos over the last three years. So we were sitting on an uh, enormously large body of, uh, of, of uh, business here and uh, so some erosion from that was not entirely unexpected. 
But I think the margin issues in shampoos is structural and uh, would remain. So we are down, uh, say, around 100 basis points in terms of margins from where we were. And that's not something which is likely to be made up. But the priority before us is to regain the momentum in terms of the revenue piece. And uh, we are pretty sure that will happen uh, very soon. All right. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. That's Dabur with their numbers. The stock uh, was doing quite well, up 3.5%, but the market is not. So 54.47 uh, now on the Nifty. It's back at that point where uh, or it shaved off quite a bit from that high point of the day, as you can see. And there is that sinking feeling even in the broader markets, despite the fact that the mid-cap index is down only half a percent. Infra realty continues to bleed quite a bit. No, it's quite a terrible day for the market. And uh, I think some of the outperforming sectors are now coming under pressure, which which is never a good sign. So the way IT has cracked today, the way auto started off this morning, that's also quite problematic. Uh, so, you know, but we saw an attempted rally from the low of the morning.